At Wahlburgers, every item on the menu tells a story. Chef Paul Wahlberg finds inspiration from all corners of the world. Chef Paul's travels have led him to the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, where he meets two men who are as passionate about potables as he is about provisions. Mark Ramsey and Digger Mains teach Chef Paul all about the secret world of moonshine, inspiring the next great Wahlburgers creation along the way. This is that story. How are we doing, guys? Hello, Paul. I'm Digger. Very nice to meet you, Paul Oliver. Yes, Mark Ramsey. Very sir. nice to meet you, sir. You. Nice to meet you. Welcome to our little neck of the woods. Well, it's beautiful country down here, so thank you for having me. My first impression, Mark, in Digger was the genuine kindness. They like as nice a, a gentleman that you're going to meet, and that that really comes through right off the bat. Well, we understand from our folks you're wanting to go make a little run of liquor with us. Yeah, I'd like to give it a shot and see, you know, see how it's done. So well, we can promise you it's not too hard or we wouldn't be doing it. Well, there you go. Moonshine's extremely important to our heritage all over the country. People did what they simply had to do to survive. It's that simple. Now, we're honored that you, that you kind of chose us to show you this. Well, thank uh, you very much. You know, it's, uh, it's something that we're very proud of yeah. and our, it's our heritage. And uh, yeah, we're glad to have you here, Paul. Well, that's awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Well, keep that thought. Uh, for your own safety and ours, we can't permit you to know where this still site is. So, until we get there, I've got to put this on you, Paul. Are oh, you kidding me, right? Well, uh, yeah, I, 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 Guys, I, I'm not gonna say a word to anybody. We can't take the risk on that. The second we get you in the woods, this will come off and we'll be done with it. You hear what you're saying, right? As soon as we get you in the woods, there's no <laughs> there's no zip ties or rope involved, so that's a good, that's a positive in my book. I, it's, is this the only way we're going to do this? We have to insist that it is. Yeah, you're even more uncomfortable when I'm walking behind you with my hands over your eyes. Yeah, I'll tell you, I thought the day was over the minute they pulled out the blindfold. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. But having to think about it for a minute. I understand what their approach was and what, what they have to do because they have to take certain precautions because of what it is they, they really do. I, I really hate putting you in this position, I do. Again, that didn't... No, I, I look, I get it. If it's the only way it's going to happen, then we got to do it. All right, fair enough. All right, Paul. We want to take you right this go. way uh, and we'll put you in Are you the sure car. this is how this works? When they pull out the blindfold, they said, look, we have to go to a secret location. I'm not a big fan of secret locations. I'm not a big fan of not knowing what's, what's happening around me. Well, you know, we probably didn't need to go as far as we did driving him around, but we picked the bumpiest roads. But we thought that, you know, he needed to really get the full feeling of the experience. I don't know that I could have let a stranger blindfolded me and walk me into the woods under no conditions. I mean, you had banjo music playing, two guys in overalls, you were in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, what doesn't spell deliverance to nah, that? Nah, nah, nah. All right, Paul, I'm sorry to have to done this to you, but we're here, we're safe, everything's good. Step around, take a look, see what we got here. Alright, sorry, like I said, nah, I did it. It's all good. Well, you made it. I did, barely, but yes. I'm sure Mark's ain't to get you over here looking at this beautiful copper, but there's one more step you gotta take before you're actually gonna make any liquor. The blindfold wasn't enough? You can't make liquor without a proper pair of high back overalls. Embossed, to say the least. Well, where am I supposed to put those on? A hundred acres of changing room out there. Nature's dressing I, room. You guys, I knew you guys have been trying to get me out of my pants. We're not no, going to go with well, you. Well, there's not much to see. So, so here's, here, here what you got to do. Go up this trail, go over there, go behind that tree over there, and watch out for poison ivy. Poison ivy sucks when it's on your giblets. What about critters? Ah, they no, they're too cold. Them. They don't move fast today. All right. Not warm enough yet. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I, for the life of me, can't figure out why people need to dress me up when I go to these things. You know, it's, it's like, you know, if you go here, you gotta wear this, you gotta, and, and I get it, but the overalls, it wasn't really my cup of tea. I think we're just about right. We ought to have liquor right now. All right, guys, so in. what do you think? Woo! Yeah. I, you you should have got them in the boys' department. No, you look good enough to take to Chinatown, walk around the fireworks display, Paul. 
Well, I have no idea what that means. So <laughs> well, thank you very much. Just that means it. you're a damn handsome man. Oh, well, yeah. you need to get your glasses fixed, but that's all good. I don't guess it's nothing to joke about, Paul, and his overalls. Yeah, we don't favor much at all. We don't favor much at all, but just so men dig are living proof that they do make them for grown-ups. Yeah. So have you ever seen one of these like this, Paul? No, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, it's not unlike what you'd use in the kitchen. It's beautifully fabricated copper. But this little fella here, we affectionately call him a piss pot. That's what the old timers termed them, and we kind of carried that tradition on. But this little rascal here, there's your pot, then your cap, your thump arm. This is a bird beak, which serves two purposes. As it comes through, if any of that cap bowls up in there out of the mash, once it gets in here to cool off enough, it'll run back down and back in the pot. Another little safety feature keeps from tainting your liquor up. So this comes over, goes into your pump post, which goes all the way near to the bottom of this pump head. It's down to right about here. It'll bubble in what liquid is down in there, catch any imperfect or in, what would you call the impurities that would come through. This little condenser post is just a little ways down in here. Mm -hmm. All the vapor comes out of it, pressure forces it over here, down into the condenser. And as you can see, we're heating up quite nicely right there. The little bubbles are forming where it's getting hot, hot. This is 12 turns at least down underneath cold water. And we should, that tells you right here, especially these little bubbles right here yep. that are forming where it's boiling the water on the top of the worm. Mm -hmm. That shows you we're going to have liquor pretty soon. So, if you will place your coon pecker. I'm sorry, what? Coon pecker. Coons are the luckiest animals. Well, one of the eight or ten luckiest animals on the planet. Coons, uh, badgers, bears, coyotes, they all have a bacula, which yep. is a bone inside their penis. They're lucky. There's no Viagra in their world. They're set on go 24 7. But it's ivory, it's bone without a marrow. So we have one. It's a trainer, it'll get bigger with time. So be patient, young man. You know, you know something? I should put the mask back on. <laughs> Coon peckers are no joking matter. Especially to the coon yeah, that especially forfeited Especially that it. raccoon. I mean, they, I mean, that's being obligated to your task right there. Yeah, that's committed. That is committed. So, you know, there's nothing joking about coon ivory. That goes right in that spout as far as it'll go. And that will make the stream more uniform. Okay, right there. There you go. Nope, just, just, just leave, leave it, it Just leave it in just there. Leave it, 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 it will follow that bone all the way. You See can actually run, run it. Prop. Right into a, a something as small as a pop bottle. Really? You know? Yeah. yeah cause because it, it just it so doesn't much, bobble. It just tempers it right now. I don't know who figured that out, yep. but it does work. Honestly, a crooked stick will do the same thing, but in our world, this is what the old timers taught us, and they they always kept one in their pocket. Now the people ask us all the time, Paul, say, well, where can we get one of them? They're laying everywhere in the road. You just got to stop and harvest you one. Yep. But only 50% of them will have it. Yep. You know, if so. we're lucky. I gave Mark one time, and it was big as that. It was almost big as that pipe. When it got killed, it got hit by a Chevrolet truck. There were 11 female coons killed themselves right behind it. <laughs> <laughs> this is high proof liquor yep. that we're catching right here now. This is the first jar. Basically, all whiskeys, bourbons, liquors. All of them, when they're made at this point, they're all moonshines. Yep. It's just simply how you choose to age them, yep. filter them, process them. The reason this was so popular back during Prohibition, 40s, 50s, 70s, right on up and so on, it was sellable immediately. Yep. You know, people had to have money now. So I have a question. Like if this is, I mean, it's not very big. So where do you, like, you don't make it everything out here and bottle it out, you oh, know, no, no, get no. that. This is our research and development. Oh, that's why the secrecy. Exactly. I mean, this is, this is a secret research lab. I get it now. Yeah, this is not like the big food factory yep. where we protect our 11 herbs and spices. The spirits that are made for the masses to where they can enjoy them are like made this. at Sugarlands yep. Distilling Company. And we knew you were coming. We know we were going to bring you out here, so we we brought a couple of things with you. So what is this? This is our rye apple. We yep. use this for a lot of different things other than just drinking. It's an outstanding product. That is the apple to my rye. Oh my God, that's I mean, really good. 
That's really tasty. That's you, know? The, you know as well, you probably know way more than we do. It's always a balance trying to get to that point where everything's living in harmony yep. and you're not drowning out one with the other. No, absolutely. But That's super tasty. But these come, these come from the main distillery at Sugarlands. Yep. You know, making liquor, running a still or distilling as some folks call it, you know, yeah, it's a complicated process when you start out. But uh, it's just like anything else, you, you build up your memory action and it becomes second nature. So any further questions, Paul? No, it's just amazing. And like how clean and like you're in the middle of nowhere and it's very organized. I, I'm very impressed. We were told a long time ago by a few of the old moonshiners, always keep your still sight very neat, very clean, make it look attractive because when you get busted, the picture's gonna be on the front page yeah. of the paper and you want it to look nice. You want it to look absolutely. <laughs> Any neighbors just make fun of you if it's not. Yep. Okay. So, at the end of this run, all you gotta do is pull your pecker out and put it in your pocket, you're ready to go. You've got a, you've got a, a little pin pocket for it right there. That's what that pocket that is for? That bone is actually yours to keep. Oh my goodness. Yeah, right here is where I usually carry mine. So when people say, what's that? I just say, it's my pecker. It's yeah, my pecker. Yeah. Okay. So you got to do, people get a kick out of it. Oh, that's And that's this fun. is a legal brand of liquor. Once we get awesome. this tempered up yep. in a jar, we'll give you a jar of it as well. Awesome. But uh, we've got a buddy up here that's uh, smoking a little meat for us. And uh, we think we need to head upstream and find him. Really? Yes, sir. That's awesome. As we're kind of talking through this, and when I tasted that apple rye, like I had flavors and like wheels started turning. So is there a place we can stop? I can get a few supplies because I want to make a barbecue sauce. Oh yeah. If you're going to make barbecue because this would be perfect. Really? You're going to yeah. make it with, with the rye? Oh, absolutely. Because oh, I, the, I love yeah. those flavors. And it's got that I good pepper in that apple. Absolutely. Sir, you have earned our trust and our respect. You don't have to wear the blindfold going out. I was gotten so attached to it. Well, then uh, you take it with you. Well, thank you very much. only in your pocket. Thank you. Yes, sir. You, you can leave us out here, man. Oh, this is awesome. Wait, you know, I, I have no here. idea how we're getting out of here. <laughs> Learning about, you know, the moonshine process from experienced moonshiners, it's amazing. It's that care and attention to detail. Like, I'll tell you, when you come to the ingredients, it doesn't get much better than this.